So that's number one. You know, not all problems are caused by God. Number one, sometimes they're self-inflicted. Sometimes they're caused by other people, right? Because the sins of other people can cause pain and suffering in people's life. And we already talked about family breakdowns. But what about somebody that drinks and drives? If you drink and drive, you're a bloody idiot, like they say in Australia. So if you drink and drive, you run somebody over and you ruin their life. Was that God? You know, I would say to people out door to door, you know, if somebody grabs a gun and shoots somebody, is that God's fault? You know, it's not God's fault. It's just people have a free will. And unfortunately, people use that free will to cause pain to others. You know, drug abuse, molestation, right? People are doing things to young uh, women and children, uh, women and, and, and men. Uh, what about murder, theft, adultery? You know, all the laws. And this is why God has laws in place. And there are certain uh, things that people commit that should earn them the death sentence. And, you know, there are certain fines that God puts in place and, and uh, beatings and things like that in order to prevent uh, these sins from affecting other people in society. Uh, let's look at Jeremiah here. Jeremiah 32. Look at this verse here. It says, And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech, which I commanded them not. Look at this. Neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. So there is a lot of sick and weird, perverted stuff that goes on in this world. Um, and, you know, this is not God's fault. I mean, if God is, is the God of Calvinism and he's a puppet master, then he's a sicko, right? Like the God of Calvinism is sick because he's the one controlling all the rapists and all the homosexuals and all the, you know, the people that do all this weird stuff and people that are raping people and um, um, raping children and whatnot. I mean, God is saying here that there are certain things that man does because man has a free will and the evil of his heart. He didn't command them to do it. Neither came it into my mind. He didn't even think of these things. These are things that man thought of. And that's why, you know, sometimes bad things happen in this world because of other people. Uh, let's look at uh, 1 Timothy 6, verse 10. This is a very famous verse. Just want to point out a few things for you guys uh, in this verse. It says here, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. You know, a lot of suffering in this world is caused by the love of money. We think of the wars that happen because, you know, there's the military industrial complex, you know, funding both sides of the war. They want to go to war. Maybe there's oil in a country. There are natural resources and that's why they go to war. Uh, what about poverty? Because you've got evil men in high places, you know, printing and printing money like they do in Australia and America, just printing money. And this printing of money is stealing resources from the people to the point where even a regular job is not enough to sustain people. And this is why you have countries that have poverty and all these things. And you know, people will say things like, oh, you know, uh, people in Africa or people in these other countries, you know, oh, they're, they're so, you know, they've got it so hard and they have all this poverty. And that's true. But oftentimes they blame the wrong people. They say like, oh, you know, you know, we have to have uh, you know, we have to give them more money or we have to, um, you know, it's, the, it's the, um, the corporations, right? The evil corporations that are, you know, taking all these money from these people. But then you have to ask the question, well, why? We have evil corporations in Australia, but we don't have all this unclean water and all these, uh, you know, uh, we don't, we're not living on the street like you see in, in uh, these third world countries. Why is that? It's because it's a corrupt government. It's they're being oppressed. Why can't they just go out and get a job and make money? Well, it's because the opportunity is not there for them. Why? It's not because corporations don't want to give them jobs, because if the jobs were there, they, then, then, you know, if you have a business, you want to hire people. There's something that's happening in that economy that, that people are not aware of that is stopping those people from being able to dig themselves out of that hole that they're in. And generally, it's the love of money. The love of money is what is destroying our food. Right? Because they need to create so much food on such a small plot of land that they just put whatever they have to in that ground to, to give you a nice looking apple, but there's no nutrition in that apple. And this is why you know, organic and natural food costs so much more because you can't grow as much on the same plot of land. 
So our food, you know, our water, you know, vaccinations, for example, I believe a lot of injuries that come from vaccinations are because of the love of money, because they've spent all this R&D creating this vaccination that they need to push it, right? And they need to convince governments to buy it off them um, in order to make that money back. Because, you know, I'm not against, you know, I'm not against people vaccinating their children. I personally don't vaccinate my children. I don't think it's worth the risk. I think there are other ways you can build immunity in your body. But you just wonder, like, why are the vaccine companies so adamant in pushing it, pushing their agenda and pushing it on the government? Because I think if vaccinations are so great, then why don't you make people buy them rather than, you know, trying to sign a contract with the government for the government to buy them all and then push it and force it onto all the, all the population. If vaccines are so good, they should sell themselves, right? Nobody, nobody has to go out and buy you an iPhone, right? Because an iPhone sells itself, because if it's good and people want it, then people will go and buy it. And I think it's the same uh, with vaccinations. So, you know, the love of money, wars, poverty, starvation, food, water, vaccinations, you know, corrupt medical system. Sometimes this is the cause of a lot of the suffering in our, in our world. And that's why people have degenerative diseases, because our food doesn't have any nutrition in it anymore. You know, people suffer from different skin allergies and things like that because of vaccinations, because of the stuff that's in our water. Um, so this is another reason why uh, there's a lot of suffering in our world. It's not caused by God. But a couple of things I want to just mention about this verse, because a lot of people have the wrong idea of this verse. I mean, number one, it's, and you guys probably know this already, but it's not, that, it's not money that's evil. Money is not evil. Money is neutral. I mean, money is just a, a different form of goods and resources. I mean, if you cut a cow up into little pieces, I mean, that's what money is. It's just a different way that you can barter. Um, but I won't, I won't go into all that. But, you know, money is not evil. Money is a neutral thing that can be used for good or evil. What is, e what is the root of all evil is the love of money. The love of money is the root of all evil because, because of the love of money, that's where people will want to hurt somebody else in order to get more money. But a couple of things I just want to say here, it's not the love of money that is evil. Right? It's the love of money is the root of all evil. But a couple of things I just want to tell you here is, it doesn't say here that the love of money is the cause of all evil. It's the root of all evil. Because some people will say this verse in the King James Bible, they say, oh, the King James Bible didn't translate this properly because it's not, how can the love of money cause all evil? Well, that's not what this verse is saying. It doesn't say that the love of money causes all evil. Because some people might say, well, how does you know this person you know, raping this little child or molesting this little child and then murdering them how is that related to the love of money so they would sort of say like how is this verse true because how can that love of money cause that evil to that person well number one is you know maybe we don't understand the situation and the bible still says that so maybe if we don't understand how the love of money is the root of all evil we can still believe or well, somehow it's related to it but even so, that's not what the Bible says because the Bible doesn't say the love of money is the cause of all evil. It says it's the root of all evil because the love of money does not cause all evil. You know, because sometimes people do evil to other people um, not uh, for the love of money, but just because of whatever reason. So it doesn't say it's the cause of all evil. Neither does it say it's the cause of all sin. Right, so not all sin starts from the love of money. You know, sin can be for many reasons, of, of the desire of somebody's heart or whatever, because evil and sin are two different things. Sin is when you transgress the law of God. Evil is when you do harm to somebody else. And not all evil is sinful, because God does evil, right? Remember when God was going to do evil to Nineveh? He said God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he said he would do unto them, and he did it not. So it's not saying the love of money is the root of all sin. It's the root of all evil. So now that we have those uh, preconceived ideas out of this verse, how then do we understand this verse? What does it mean when it says the love of money is the root of all evil? So it's not the cause of all evil. Um, it's not the cause of all sin. It's not even the root of all sin. It's the root of all evil. So it's the root of why people harm another person. Well, how do I understand it? I think it's a misunderstanding of what the word root means. And a, a lot of people will think, well, if it's the root of all evil, they equate that with what's the cause of everything. But think, think about a tree, right? Think about a plant. Um, 
what are the roots of the plant? The root is not where that plant comes from, right? Where that plant comes from is the seed. So it's not saying that the love of money is the seed of all evil. It's saying it's the root of all evil. But once that seed goes into the ground and then it takes root, what do the roots do? The roots system is how it gets its nourishment, right? How it draws up the water. The root system is also what gives it stability. You know, when you try and pull the tree out of the ground, the deeper the roots are into that ground, the, the harder it is to get out. And that's how I understand this verse. When it comes to evil and the love of money, the love of money is what fuels the evil, is what gives the evil nourishment. It's what gives the evil stability and power. And the reason why it's so hard to, to remove that evil is because there is a love of money, that evil will continue to happen. So hopefully that, uh, that was interesting for you and gives you a bit of a, in, bit of a different thought on that verse.